Fly virtual machines are ephemeral, which means you might lose data when you redeploy your application or whenever your app stops, your virtual machines stop and restart, which remember happens when your machines go idle. So they're ephemeral, which means any files you save to the disk are going to disappear the next time a virtual machine stops and starts because it restarts with a fresh slate. So to get around that, we can create and mount a volume to your virtual machine and you can save your files to the volume. Those uh, files saved to the volume will persist because it's an actual disk allocated um, to your virtual machine. So there's a few steps here. We're going to create a volume. We're going to mount it to our application. And then we're going to see some special setup for our Laravel application so that we can uh, save our storage directory specifically, which requires a little bit of jiggering. So we're going to do fly volumes create. We're going to name it storage dir. It's going to be in the region Boston. You have to select the region here. It has to match the uh, region your machines are running in, that your application is running in. We're going to do a size of 20, which means gigabytes. I'm going to do fly volumes list to ensure this volume actually exists, and it does, right? 20 gigabytes in Boston. Um, it's encrypted, which is great, all that good stuff. So now we can mount it. And the way to do that is to configure our fly.toml file. And at the very bottom here, we're going to add a mounts section. OK, so in our mounts section, we have the source, which is our storage dirt. That's the name of the volume. Our destination is where on the virtual machine we want to uh, mount the volume. In this case, we're actually going to use the Laravel storage directory because that's often where we're saving files, like user uploaded files or anything like that. So in my case, I'm going to assume that we want to overwrite the Laravel storage directory uh, with our volumes data. In other words, any data that we save to the storage directory, we're going to assume goes to a volume that's persisted between deployments and that kind of stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and run a fly deploy. And we're going to see that we run into our first of, I believe, two issues. All right, we have a cryptic error here. Process group app needs volume with name storage dirt for fill mounts defined in fly.toml. This is actually what we already did. So why is it telling us to do it again? It's a little bit cryptic, but the real issue is that we have two virtual machines. Remember, we uh, started two virtual machines, which is the default. Now, the problem with that is that a volume can only be mounted to one virtual machine. So our options here are either to create two volumes that match you know, the region Boston and all that good stuff, and then each machine gets a volume mounted to it, or we can just go down to one machine and mount one volume. Now, Fly does not manage persisting or replicating data across multiple volumes. So if we have two volumes and two machines, they'll have a split brain problem where different data is on different storage directories, depending on which virtual machine is just serving your request at the time that a file is uploaded or placed into uh, that storage directory. So the easier option here is actually to do fly and remove uh, force to get rid of one of the machines. So this is the machines API. So it's technically fly machines, remove. I just love fly M because it's nice and handy. We can do remove or we can do RM. We'll do the force flag because you need that to uh, remove a started server or you have to run stop first, so no big deal. And the one I'm going to delete is this first one up here, I believe. And then we can have one machine um, for this application now instead of two. If you want to run multiple machines, instead of using volumes, you might want to save files to something like S3 or R2 or some you know remote location instead of onto the disk drive of your virtual machines. But we're going to assume we want the volume for this video. And therefore, we're going to go down to one machine because it's just simpler. So we'll do fly status. Great. Let's go ahead and keep refreshing this page. We'll see that this is a virtual machine. It was stopped. So it's now going to get started to serve this request. That gets served. Great. We'll do fly status again. We'll see it started because it's going to serve that request. And then we can move on um, with another fly deploy. Now, after this fly deploy, we're actually going to hit our second issue, which we need to resolve. While this is getting created, I'm going to do a new tab and go to fly logs. And we're going to see that we probably have some errors eventually. So we already have our stack trace pumped out here. That stack trace is telling us that there's some errors with um, Laravel. And that problem, the problem that's happening is the storage dirt is not in the right place yet. It doesn't yet exist. This um, is going to delay the deployment rate because it doesn't get a healthy machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that deployment. And we're going to see how to fix this issue. OK, so any commands we run into Laravel are going to fail because the storage directory doesn't exist when the virtual machine boots up because the volume, which is empty, overwrote that storage directory. And the storage directory has important stuff in it, um, the app directory, the framework directory, the logs directory, all that stuff that Laravel tries to use 
whenever it's booting the framework. So uh, the stuff's going to fail. And in particular, our fly uh, scripts directory has this caches at the sh file in it, right? That is trying to run PHP artisan commands. And that is going to boot up the framework and do all sorts of stuff um, like, you know, configure uh, cache to config and all that good stuff. But the storage directory doesn't exist anymore. So it's going to generate an error. So what we want to do here is a few things. We're going to um, do it so we have this one-time process where we copy the storage directory stuff uh, into the volume and then let Laravel do its thing. We're going to copy our local storage directory into a new directory named storage underscore, right? It's copied, so we have uh, two storage directories here. And then we are going to create a uh, boot up script into this machine in the dot fly scripts directory, I'm going to name it 00 volumes.sh. I'm naming it 00 because the scripts in here are going to get run in alphabetical order. So we want to make sure this gets run first before anything else. The contents of this script are going to be the following. So it's going to check to see if storage app exists. If it does not exist, it means our volume is mounted, but is empty. So the storage app directory doesn't exist there yet. Now, then it's going to do uh, a check to see if our storage underscore directory exists. It will in our next deployment because the um, storage underscore directory exists. We just copied and created it, right? And that's going to get deployed up in our application. If it's not found there, then we run into an error and we exit with an error status code. Otherwise, it copies the entire contents of the storage underscore into the storage directory. The storage directory is empty at this stage because our volume got mounted to that location, but it's empty. We're going to populate it with this copy command, and then we can remove and get rid of that old storage underscore uh, directory. And then our storage directory in the volume should be populated and Laravel should run just fine. So let's go ahead and run a fly deploy and see if that's what's happening. So our deployment is going here. It is passing and our fly logs don't show any exceptions. So I think we are okay. All right, that's done. Let's go ahead and just refresh this. And our application here is serving requests, right? Let's do fly SSH console, which is a new command I haven't shown yet. This will SSH into the running machine and we can check out what's here. Our storage directory is here, right? Our storage underscore directory is not. Uh, we can check out what's in the storage stuff and there is stuff in there. We see this lost and found directory, which is exactly what you want to see because whenever you mount over an existing directory with a volume on Linux servers, you get this lost and found directory here. We can do, I think df-h will work for here or lsblk perhaps, both of these. Um, we see we have a disk mounted at the var dub HTML storage directory. And that disk is also here. Uh, VBD is its ID, all that good stuff. It's 20 gigabytes like we expect. So that's perfect. We have a volume here. We can save stuff to that storage directory. And every time we deploy, the data in there will get persisted. So now that data is going to always be there for us through deployments or when the servers stop and start and all that good stuff. 